I'm going to show you one way of working a pico edge, and this edge is really nice anytime you are using a rolled hem. A rolled hem would be something that you'd see at the, the cuff of a cap or the um, cuff of sleeves or the bottom of a sweater. Anytime the hem can be turned, you can do this edge. Um, go ahead and watch the technique, and I think you'll see that this can be easily substituted into patterns for whatever edge they have that might be plain. This is a nice little decorative technique that you can apply if you like. Let's take a look. Here's a little hat I knit up, and here is the pico edge. It's just a little detail that's different from a plain edge, and it's really easy to work. Okay. So I have this sample here, just plain stockinette, and to work this, you're going to be shocked, I think, at how easy this is. For one round or one row, this is the same whether you're working um, in the round or on flat, for, with something flat, you knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over. You work this pattern across the whole row or round, like I said. Maybe I should demonstrate. Knit two together is a one stitch decrease. And then to yarn over, you pull the yarn forward between the two needles which creates um, this fakey stitch on the needle with a hole underneath it. Okay, after you finish that row, you'll continue to go on and knit your piece. You actually might not want to seam or roll the hem until you're completely finished knitting, but um, I'll bring in another sample here. This is what it will look like when you have more. This will be the inside of the hem, and this is the, the rest of my work or the outside. But watch what magic happens. When you fold that over and roll the hem, you can see the edge. Isn't that great? And it naturally folds there because of um, the yarn over and uh, knit two together that we did. So to finish this up, I left myself a long tail here. I'm going to grab a tapestry needle, and it would work best for me if I actually clipped these down to hold my seam together like that. But this is such a tiny piece, I can easily just hold it together. So I'll pick up a little bit from the rolled hem and just grab the back of a stitch from the rest of the work. This is really nothing fancy, and I think it's just whip stitch even. But the important thing is I'm not stabbing through the work, so nothing will show up on this side. And just make, your, make sure you're consistent all the way across with the way you're seaming it. Very easy. And there's the pico edge partially held down. Now one more trick I want to show you. Back to the little hat. There's this uh, design feature I added <laughs> with this blue, and I made the pom-pom to match, but it was really just to make life easier on myself. That's why I added this blue stripe. Be, this is what I did. I cast on here, I knit down, I did the pico edge row, and then I continued knitting, and if I'm not mistaken, this was 10 rows. I knit another 10 rows and did the blue stripe. And the reason for that was so that I had an easy guideline for where I was supposed to be seaming this down. And I wasn't going to accidentally jump up a row or down a row while I was seaming it. So that was something that just happened to work out well with this hat. It was an easy enough thing to do, and it made the seaming really simple. And that's it. That's one easy way to alter a pattern to include a pico edge. How's that sound? How's that sound? Is that a real song or are we just making sh-